Hey guys, in this video, I explain everything you ever needed to know about end tidal CO2, also known to you guys as capnography. So let's get started. End tidal CO2 or ETCO2 is a non-invasive monitoring tool which measures the partial pressure or maximal concentration of carbon dioxide, CO2, at the end of an exhaled breath. These are expressed as a percentage of CO2 or millimeters of mercury. Normal values are 5 to 6% CO2, which is equivalent to 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. 35 to 45 is the range that you guys must ingrain in your brain because it reflects the measurement EMS uses on a daily basis. Within the EMS setting, you are able to measure ETCO2 by nasal prongs or by a tube-like attachment. Caponography has been the gold standard of measuring ventilation, perfusion, and metabolic status for anesthesia patients since the 1980s, whereas pulse oximetry has become the gold standard of measuring oxygen on the hemoglobin. I could not be happier that caponography is rising as another gold standard in many patient care models within the EMS realm. Carbon dioxide is the byproduct of cellular respiration. That pesky Krebs cycle is sneaking up on you guys again. Glucose plus oxygen produces ATP, the body's fuel source, water, and the waste product CO2. And it happens within every single cell in the body. Due to this constant and consistent production of CO2, the same CO2 levels should be entering the lungs and being exhaled during each ventilation cycle. Remember the active process of breathing is ventilation, and the gas exchange within the alveoli is respiration. Capnography, end tidal CO2, ETCO2, whatever you wish to call it, is first and foremost the highest gold standard for confirmation of ET tube placement within the lungs. Carbon dioxide does not reside within the stomach as it does in the lungs. This fact allows EMS providers to use capnography to identify immediately if they have placed the ET tube in the trachea or the esophagus. If after ventilating your now tubed patient, you receive an ET CO2 reading and waveform, yay, successful intubation. If you receive nothing, well, then you know right then and there your tube is misplaced. Now remember how earlier I said that end tidal CO2 measures ventilation, perfusion, and metabolic status? How exactly can it assist you in those places? First, let's talk ventilation. Caponography provides that real-time look into how fast or slow, shallow or deep your patient's ventilations are. ETCO2 waveform creates a picture of how your patient is breathing. Using this waveform and clinical findings can identify hypo and hyperventilation and even bronchospasms. I will be doing another video discussing these specific waveform patterns in the near future. Next, the metabolic state of your patient. The more CO2 that the body has, the more acidotic we say the body is. As the acidosis rises, the higher your ETCO2 number will be. And likewise, if the body is producing too little CO2, we say the body is alkalotic and the lower the end tidal CO2 number will be. However, bear in mind that ventilation status will at times change this ratio. If your patient is acidotic and tachypnic or breathing rapidly, you may see a lower than expected ETCO2 number because that patient is breathing off most of their CO2 within the body through those rapid ventilations. A thorough physical assessment will help find the clues you need to help explain these subtle changes. Perfusion is critical to life. Without perfusion, the body goes into shock and ultimately will die. If cardiac output falls for any reason, the amount of CO2 that reaches the alveoli falls as well. This decrease in available CO2 to exhale lowers the ETCO2 numerical value. The more the ETCO2 falls, the closer to cardiac arrest the patient becomes. During cardiac arrest, EMS providers can use caponography to gauge effective CPR as well as return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC. End tidal CO2 has been noted through two separate pre-hospital studies to be the earliest indication of ROSC in cardiac arrest. 
During CPR, ETCO2 should read around 12 if providing good high quality chest compressions. If you find it is lower than 12, check for the chest compression speed and depth. If you see a sharp rise in ETCO2 from 12 to anything above 20, stop CPR and chest cross as added perfusion over CPR has been initiated. Do not be scared to use end tidal CO2 on your poor perfusing patients, including sepsis, shock, any respiratory patient, altered mental status, seizure patients, and even your trauma patients. Remember, you have been given an ideal tool to help use and paint a picture of how your patient's internal biology is functioning. Caponography will allow EMS providers the ability to see the changes happening before other signs and symptoms begin to show themselves. So for the first time, you might just be ahead of that eight ball. Well, guys, that's it for today's video. Stay safe out there, and I will see you guys in the next video.